In this video, we're going to have a look at functions. Now, a function can be thought of as a machine, and the machine does what it does to whatever is fed into it. In the same way that a washing machine washes clothes, that is its function. What comes out at the other end depends on what gets fed into it. So if dirty socks go in, clean socks come out. If a dirty jumper goes in, a clean jumper comes out. So whatever gets fed into the machine, whatever gets fed into the function, undergoes the same process before it comes out the other end. So similarly, if you're thinking of a chef, a chef will uh, put whatever ingredients he has to hand, uh, will process these, and will produce something out the other end. So a function can be thought of in that way. Now, whatever gets fed into a function is normally thought of as x. Now a function will have a name, usually a letter, uh, like f or g or h, or it can be anything really, but whatever comes out the other end will be known as f of x. So x, the input value, has the function f applied to it, and what you end up with is f of x. Now that function, um, it might do something like perhaps double whatever is fed into it. So if you were to feed the number 10 into this function, 10 gets doubled and what comes out the other end is 20. Now the way a function would be written would be to say in this case that if a function adds 3 to whatever is fed into it, we would say f of x, where x is the input value, f of x is equal to x plus 3. So whatever is being fed into the function is then or has three add, added on to it. So we would say that uh, f of 2 would just be 2 plus 3. Where 2 is your input value, so we just replace the x with 2, and you end up saying that your final answer would be 5. f of 5 would be, in this case, x is 5, so the input value is 5, so we add 3 to it, and we get 8. f of 7 would be 7 plus 3, which is 10. Sometimes you will feed algebra into your function. If you feed algebra into your function, you get algebra usually out the other end as well. So we just leave our final answer as being t plus 3. So whatever comes out depends on what gets fed into it. So this function, the input value, gets squared and then has 4 added on to it. So when our input value is 2, f of 2 is 2 squared plus 4, which is 4 plus 4, which is 8. f of negative 5 would be negative 5 squared plus 4, which would be 25 plus 4, which is 29. f of 3 would be 3 squared plus 4, so 9 plus 4, which is 13. And f of 2t, if we feed some algebra in, it becomes 2t squared plus 4, which is 4t squared plus 4. Okay? If we look at this function, this function takes the input value, and it doubles the input value, and then takes away 1 from whatever you get. So if our input value is 2, we just double the input value and take away 1. 4 take away 1 is 3. If our input value is 5, we double our input value, take away 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. If our input value is negative 7, the machine just does what it does. It just doubles the input value, takes away 1. Negative 14 take away 1, negative 15. And if we feed 3t into our function, we double the 3t and then take away 1. So we end up with 6t minus 1. Now, sometimes what you will have to do is you'll be given an output value, and you'll have to work out what the input value was. So going back to the washing machine analogy again, if you find that after the washing machine has done its stuff, you have a clean pair of socks, what must have gone into the washing machine must have been a dirty pair of socks. So what you're given in this case is f of q, and you're told that f of q is 17. 
Now, we have as a template that f of x is 2x minus 1. Now, if we're talking about f of q, all I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the input value with q. And I'll know that f of q is 2q minus 1. Now, if I know that f of q is 17, then I can just replace f of q with 17. So I just end up with 17 is 2q minus 1. Now I've got an equation that I've constructed. I can solve it, and I can say by adding 1 to both sides that 2q is 18. So q itself must be 9. Here's another example. We've got another function this time that f of x is a half of x plus 3. You're talking about f of q. So what we'll do is we'll just write down what f of q would be. f of q, by way of what the function is, would be a half of q plus 3. We know that f of q has to be equal to 8. So we can replace f of q with 8, and we get that 8 is a half of q plus 3. Take 3 away from both sides, we get that a half of q is equal to 5. So doubling both sides, q itself must be 10. So that's functions. Okay, What comes out depends on what goes in. So you can be given input values and asked to work out the output values, or you can, as we've seen, be given output values and be asked to work out the input values. So try and see if you can do uh, these questions yourselves. Uh, for the function f of x is 2x plus 3, uh, work out uh, each of these, pause the video, and then you can check back and see if your answers were correct or not. OK, let's have a look then. For the function f of x is 2x plus 3, f of 2 will just be 2 lots of 2 plus 3, which is 4 plus 3, which is 7. f of 10 will be 2 lots of 10 plus 3, which is 20 plus 3, is 23. f of negative 3 will be 2 lots of negative 3 plus 3. So negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. f of a, if you feed in some algebra, it'll be 2 lots of the input value plus 3. So that's just going to be 2a plus 3. And if we feed 3y into it, we get 2 lots of 3y plus 3, which will end up being 6y plus 3. Now, in each of these questions, you were given the input value and asked to work out the output value. For question f, what you were given was the output value. You were told that for an input value of t, the output value is 25. So what we'll do is we'll say that f of t would have to be 2t plus 3. We know that f of t is 25. So we'll just write down that 25 is equal to 2t plus 3. Take 3 away from both sides, you get that 2t is 22. So t itself must be 11. And you can check that if you want. Feed it back into the machine. 2 11s, 22, add 3, 25. So you know that your answer is correct. So that's functions. Think of them as a machine. Think of the input value. Think of the output value. And the notation will give you the relationship between the two. So I hope that was helpful.